warm Michigan has limited days and so what we do is we go out you know the there's been a crew behind the scenes that have been making this happen and I'm gonna jump up and I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna zoom in on a couple people give him a shout oh my gosh Look at the, look, now look, we're just moving right down the line. Come on, everybody, look over here. Look over here. Woo! And right over there is Queen of the Universe. Woo! Okay, you're going to need to fix that camera again. I'm not sure what's going on, but we just kind of, I want to give a shout out. Stacy Ragsdale, you're joining us. Super good to have you. Willie Young, Willie, good to have you. Everybody that's joining us, it's really great to have you. I want to uh, talk about something tonight, and it's just one word, and it's the word humility. You know, when you use the word humility, in my opinion, my understanding of what humility is, and when I say that I'm talking about from a biblical view or from what God says humility is, my understanding of humility many times is the difference between growing and being stuck in life. There's a lot of misunderstanding that we have when I bring up the topic of humility, and a lot of times it's just connected to our upbringing or maybe uh, something, could even be a teaching that we've heard, but much of it is based on unbiblical thinking, you know, and and I'm just going to give you a, a great example. Sometimes, you know, somebody looks at somebody and they're either poor or they're lacking, and they say, well, that's, that's a humble person. Y'all, you know, they have a low self-esteem. They're, they're humble, or they dress this way. They're humble. Now, that doesn't, those are, those are all outside things. And then over on the flip side of it, you have people that, oh, if you drive this kind of a car, then you're not humble. That's not true at all either. You know, when you, I was raised in a particular religion, and I never fully understood, but every Friday, we ate fish. And finally I said, we, and we, were, we had a bunch of kids and we got those little cheap skinny fish sticks that were about this big and half bread. And I never understood why we ate fish. And they said, well, fish is humble. And, um, and as I drilled in, I found out that the reason we ate fish was because in biblical times, fish was considered a peasant's food. And so if you were humble, then one day a week you would eat peasant's food. Well, how many of y'all know fish ain't peasant food anymore? Hot dogs are. How many of you are with me? And so, but it was this under, this ingrained thing of this is what humility is. And if you, and I think that if we don't watch it, if we look, we be, we look at humility as something on the outside. If I'm doing this, that I, then I'm humble or a natural condition. But really when you bring up the topic of humility, it is more an inside disposition that always leads to greater freedom in our lives. And I want to be clear with this. Every one of us is a construction project. I'm a construction project. You're a construction project. When we came to Jesus, we were a construction project. And maybe now he's got the commode set. Maybe now he's got some doors on. Maybe now he's put some drywall up. But for the rest of our life, we will be a construction project because we live and we were raised in a fallen world. And I think when you talk about being a construction project, Our goal isn't just, God, I want your word in my life. That is huge. But another part of it is connecting with the the power of the Holy Spirit to transform my life. I want my life to be changed. I don't want to stay the same. I want to be changed. And so when you talk about being changed, what we're going to find out today is people that are changed in the Bible were ones that had this quality or this disposition of what the Bible calls humble or humility or a humble spirit. It even says about Jesus in Philippians 2 that even though he was God, 
He didn't think being equal with God was something to be grasped, but he humbled himself to the point of a servant. And then you see Jesus giving that model when he washed his disciples' feet. He basically said, look, you are not greater than your master. We're all servants. And this is an inside heart disposition. And I want to give, if I could, a few foundational scriptures for humility when we talk about from a biblical perspective and connecting it with the power of God changing our life. The first one is in James chapter 4, verse 6. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Classic because it really extrapolates uh, this verse in a manner, I believe, that helps us get our brain around it. But it says this. It says, but he gives us more and more grace. And then notice, I think they've got it on your screen. The word grace is the power of the Holy Spirit to meet this evil tendency and all others fully. So grace is the power of the Holy Spirit to meet tendencies in my life and cause me to overcome. Look at what it says. That is why he says God sets himself against the proud and the haughty. Think about that for a moment. This was written to Christians, not non-Christians, but he said that God sets himself against the proud and the haughty, but he gives grace continually to the lowly. Remember, according to the, uh, just, a, just above this in that verse, grace is the power of the Holy Spirit to meet evil tendency in all others fully. So God gives the power of the Holy Spirit continually to meet any tendency in my life, evil tendency, he said continually to the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. So the ones that get grace or the power of the Holy Spirit or the ones who have this disposition of a teachable, graceful spirit. And so I just want to really underline that what grace is in this, in this context is it's the power of the Holy Spirit to meet my construction project needs. And I believe every one of us today sitting here looking at me, you can nudge somebody next to you and don't say you're a construction project. Say, I know I'm a construction project, but I'm open to God. See, humility is a disposition that connects our weak areas with the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say that again. Humility is a disposition. It's an inside disposition that connects our weak areas with the power of the Holy Spirit. Look at what it says in Proverbs 3, verse 34. The Lord mocks the mockers, but is gracious to the humble. Remember, grace is the power of the Holy Spirit to meet tend evil tendencies, bends, weaknesses in my life. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through verse 6 says this. In the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders. And notice there's a period. Now look at this statement. And all of you, this is everybody, dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Remember grace, the power of the Holy Spirit. God gives me the power of the Holy Spirit in a much deeper way and in a much stronger way if I will begin to get a grasp on this thing that he calls humble or humility. So, and then verse six, so humble yourself under the mighty power of God and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. See, humility isn't think less of yourself, but what humility is, is it's thinking about ourselves less. And I want to just emphasize that. God doesn't want you thinking less of yourself. 
God's not putting you down. That's false humility. But what he wants to do is to help you to be so aware of him that you actually are becoming more and more subconsciously unconscious of me, mine, and my thing. We are at our best when we're not focused on ourselves, And in the light of humility and personal growth, you know, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, Micah referenced a book in a Sunday morning sermon, and it was called The Common Rule. Great book. Uh, it was written by a lawyer who used to be a missionary to China, and now he's a, I think he's an acquisition lawyer in New York or something like that. But in that book, he made a statement from research, and he was talking about the human brain. And he said that a study that Duke University concluded, did, concluded that 40% of the actions that we take every single day are not a result of our choices, but a result of our habits. Now, I'm going to say that again. That means we don't even think we just subconsciously have a habit of reacting certain ways, doing certain things. And he said, in Duke University's research said, 40% of the average human functions in this capacity. In another book called The Power of Habit, it states that when a habit is formed, the brain stops fully participating in the decision-making process. And the patterns that we have just automatically unfold. They just automatically, certain things happen, and they just unfold. Now, let's just have an honest moment. And how many of you know that you get in certain situations and you just got some patterns that just unfold? How many of you know what I'm saying? I was recently, me and my wife, we moved. Today, I drove to my old house. You say, why did you do that? I have a pattern that just subconsciously unfolded, took me there, and I almost pulled in the driveway and walked in to somebody else's house. How many of you know that wouldn't have been a good situation? I didn't consciously say I was going to do this. It just happened. See, brain activity during habits it happens at the deepest part of our brain. And that portion of our brain is called the basal ganglia. And what it is, is that God created us this way. It saves a lot of mental energy for other thoughts. How many of you know, you don't have to think about getting dressed anymore. You just, my wife thinks about me getting dressed because she tells me, no, go back, go back. She just says, go back. She did it tonight. She said, go back. Okay. But what happens is, is we have developed these habits in our life of reacting, of responding. And if we realize we love God, but there's subconscious habits that we're not choosing to do, but it's a habit that, pr that creates very negative results. And what humility does is it begins to crack the door to say, Lord, I'm open to you to speak to me and to show me so that I can live in a level of freedom in my life that maybe I've never lived in before. You know, things that are repetitive to us. Certain people we get around, we just automatically go into a zone and a habit of the way that we interact. And it's, it's really useful generally. You know, I've got some grandkids and they're learning how to eat. Okay, I have a habit of how to eat correctly without getting food all over my face. And I'm grateful for that habit but they're still getting it down. And it requires an incredible amount of concentration for their brain to get the food from the plate and into their mouth. But as the habit kicks in, that is a good habit. But it also has a downside, and that is this. When we act out, out of bad habits, and, and what it does is it produces 
bad results in our life. And we can't see it because it's a habit that we do subconsciously and we don't consciously say, oh, I'm going to choose this. We just go there. We just go there. And see, this is where humility comes in. You know, I heard a story, and I thought it was a great story, but um, of these two young fish that were swimming in this river. And as they were swimming in this river, they were just kind of trucking along, and, and they crossed the path of an older fish. And the older fish looked over at him and said, how's the water? And they looked at him and didn't say nothing, swam up, and they swam up a little way. And the one fish looked at the other one and said, what in the heck is water? They were so aware subconsciously that they totally didn't even know, recognize what water was. And it was a habit that they really didn't see anymore. And I think in our lives sometimes, what it is, is that we love God, we want God, and we choose God, but humility is what cracks the door to say, Lord, I'm open to you in every area of my life. I want to read a scripture, and it's in Psalms 19, and we're going to read verse 7 through verse 12 in the New Living. They'll put it up on the screen. But what I want you to notice is the first major portion of this scripture, excuse me, is talking about the word of God. If you were not here last week for Sunday morning worship, or you haven't watched it online, I want to encourage you. You need to. It'll help. It'll transform. It'll lift. This Sunday, we're going in a similar vein, but just a little different direction but it's talking about the word of God. But then what I want you to notice where this finishes. And so let's just start reading in Psalms 19, verse seven. It says, the instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. Man, I like that. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear. They give insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true. Each one is fair. They are more to be desired than gold even than the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the honeycomb. Now look at this, verse 11. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. Look at verse 12. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden, the Amplified says, unconscious faults. I think it's interesting that it talks about everything that you see. It's talking about what the word of God is, but then he gets down to verse 12 and he relates to himself. And what he basically says is, God, I know I got some stuff going on in my heart, but they're hidden. It's unconscious. I don't see it. I don't know how it got there. But he, there's an attitude of humility where he's saying, God, will you help me? Will you cleanse me? Will you show me? Will you? And I think the huge thing is when we talk about this is just a thought, but am I open to hear from others because I have an awareness that I don't fully see? I remember, and this was probably... This was a lot of years ago, more than 20 years ago. And I had this guy that was a friend of mine, and he was a single guy. And he was always loved God with all of his heart. Loved God. And he was always looking. He was looking for a girl, looking for a girl. He was always looking for a girl. And when a single girl would come to the church, you know what I'm saying? He was a heat-seeking missile. He, he was just like all over it. We used to, dude... Don, if you're watching, I love you, brother. <laughs> but we would go like this. When a girl would come in, we'd go like this. That meant he was looking. You know what I'm saying? And he'd go over there. But he had this tendency that he would meet them and then pick his nose while he was talking to them. Now, how many of y'all know 
he did not consciously sit here and say, but when he got nervous, what he did is there was a subconscious thing that they would just kind of look at him. What? Can I tell you, this is a true story. <laughs> One time I walked up to him and he's talking to this girl and I said, yo, you got a dangler. That's what I said to him because he's standing there. Okay, I know I'm being gross, okay. <laughs> and you know what he did? Terrible. He checked the zipper. I am like in front of this girl. And I just, I was like, I can't believe. It was, he had these great guy, loved God, but he had these tendencies that were hidden. They were not conscious, but it was derogatorily affecting him. And many times in our lives, what it is, is God is saying, I know you love me. I know you care about me. I know you want my will. But every one of us have what's called hidden and unconscious bends, tendencies, weaknesses, and things in our life that we have picked up in our upbringing, in our exposure, through things happening to us, through perceptions, through the way maybe our parents interacted with us, siblings, people, whatever it is. And what happens is, is we have to be open because those things will limit God's best for our life. So the first thing is we got to be open to hear from others because realize this, we're not aware. We don't see. And so God will bring people into our life to just say, hey, man, chew with your mouth closed. How many of you know what I'm saying? We'll just be like, hey, you know, the next is invite the Lord into that area. And I mean, notice like we just read in Psalms 19. He invited the Lord. He said, God, your word is all of this, but I know I've got quirks. I know I got bends, and I invite you in. And the next is just the key word, and it's humility, is recognize that it is a combination. It isn't just one thing. And I'm making an assumption here. You're watching, and I'm going to make an assumption that you know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, I'm going to pray before we get off and introduce you to him, because Jesus is the game changer to life. It isn't your financial status. It isn't your career. It isn't where you live. It isn't who you marry. It isn't your boyfriend or girlfriend. Jesus is the game changer to life. And so I'm making an assumption that you, that you know the Lord, that you've given your life to the Lord and, and that you've been born again as the Bible teaches and the Holy Spirit lives in you. But having laid that foundation and when we, when I use the term humility is, is that realize this, that you've given your heart to Christ. You have the power of the presence of the Holy Spirit right now on the inside of you. He's right now on the inside of you. He is working, but what he wants is for you to bring a disposition of humility. Lord, I'm open. Lord, I can hear. Lord, I'll see. The next thing is this, is ask God to help you become self-aware. Lord, help me. Show me, God. What's holding me back? Is there anything holding me back? Don't get defensive. Don't get condemning. Don't beat yourself up. I said earlier, we're all a construction project. You Maybe you just need to sit there and say to yourself, I'm cool with being a construction project. Realize this, if you can admit you're a construction project, then you will move forward. But if we can't admit that we're a construction project, then we're not humble and we'll stay in that spot. And so we have to stop and say, Lord, my construction area is right here. And so you ask him to help you to become self-aware, and he will. The next thought, and this is key, is the word repentance. Repentance. Repentance isn't something I just say, I'm sorry. How many of you know what I'm saying? That's part of it. But repentance is a change of heart where we stop and we say, Lord, I, I realize that I got this quirk. I got this bend. And Lord, I don't like it. You showed it to me and I see it. And Lord, right now, I'm asking you to help me. Help me to change my heart. Lord, I see it. And Lord, I'm in agreement with what you wanna do in my life. 
I'm in agreement because you want to bring freedom. And the, le- and the next thing in regard to humility is the word self-control. Self-control. Don't go down the dirt road. What I mean by that is this, that there is a hunger and a desire beyond the stirring and the emotion of the moment. When you're like God's dealing with you, it's like, oh my gosh, how many, you know, we've all had them times in church or in our devotion with Holy Spirit's blowing and it's just like, yes, God, this is super powerful. Now it needs to translate into you leave that moment and God, you said and you showed me and I am a powerful person and what that means is, is I can have self-control and I'm asking you to help me in this area. I'm asking you to help me. Don't condemn yourself. Don't condemn yourself. You know, usually when we talk about humility and hidden and unconscious habits or things that quirks that we do, we all have them. I mean, I'm sitting here right now. I got quirks. I got habits. Just get to know me. You'll know them. I got quirks. I got habits. I don't beat myself up, but I just admit it. Lord, I need you to help me. And this is what I love, is you know what? I might not be exactly where I want to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. And the goal is every one of us taking one more step to greater freedom in our life. And so don't condemn yourself. And I think that the more that we follow with a disposition of humility, And we stop and we say, some of us, maybe you've never even heard that statement before, that 40% of your, what we do is a habit that is subconscious, that is not even a conscious choice. And we wonder why did this person react this way? Or why did this happen like this? Or why does this keep happening to me? We have to stop and say, Lord, I'm open and I'm teachable. I want you to show me. You know what I want to do is I want to, I think I got a couple minutes left, but I want to pray and I want to pray for everybody that's watching, but I equally want to pray before we even start. If you've never given your heart to Christ, I'm not, this is just not some quick prayer. This is a, I am really sick and tired of being sick and tired and doing it my way. Jesus, I need you. I want you. I'm going all in. I don't know if you're a poker player. Poker, when you got the winning hand, you slide all your chips into the center and you say, I'm going to kick butt on this one. And you go all in. God right now is asking you to go all in. And I want to just pray with you. Maybe you're watching and you say, I know the Lord, but I'm not where I should be. I want you to pray with me. God, as we come before you tonight, we are so grateful for Jesus. We're so grateful that you don't judge us in regard to our performance, but when we accept Jesus, we experience your forgiveness, your releasing, and your Holy Spirit comes into our life. And Lord, we come before you and we just acknowledge, Lord, we need you more than anything else. And that maybe if you're praying with me, I want you to just say this, Jesus, I need you. I give you my heart. I give you the rest of my life. Help me, God, to choose you. I invite you in, and I thank you. Jesus' name, amen. And Lord, I lift up everybody else right now that's watching, and I know this. Lord, that humility is a always under construction, growing area. We live in a world that's just incredibly arrogant and resistant and maybe won't admit. Or Lord, maybe doesn't see, but we see in your word that the disposition of humility and openness and a tender heart toward you is one that experiences the power of the Holy Spirit to help us overcome weaknesses within our own life. And Lord, I lift up everyone right now that's watching. I pray the comfort of your spirit, the strength of your spirit. And Lord, I pray for an aha moment right now. Lord, maybe they've been looking and saying, what's the use? I'm not growing. What's the use? It's not getting better. 
But today you turned the light on and you began to show them that you want an inside disposition of humility. That when you blow on an area that maybe they never saw before, that there's an agreement with you. There's an inviting of you into that area and that you bring transformation there. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's tuned in. I thank you for moving in their homes and in their lives. And Lord, let us as Christians not just be marked by our Bible or by a title over our life, but let us be marked by life and transformation. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining. Man, we're done for this season. We got a break for the summer, but I want to encourage you to go online. Join one of the, um, one of the groups that are going to be going on. You say, I want to golf, but I can't golf. Half of us that golf can't golf. And 25% of the ones that think they can golf can't golf. And I'm going to tell them to listen to this message. God bless you. Super good to have you.